Hey everybody, welcome to another day with the Norps. Today's video is brought to you by HelloFresh, but more about that later. First, we gotta talk about books. In one of my previous videos, I redid a spot in my bedroom and I talked about my books and I asked you guys if you wanted me to do a book organization tour idea, whatever. Heard from a lot of you that you did, but I also heard from a few of you that officially it's you call it a library when you have over a thousand books. And so last night, late last night, I was so obsessed with the idea of being officially having a library that I went to all through all the rooms in the house and I counted how many books I have. And let me check, I can't remember how many it was. I have 1,222 books in the house, not including some books I have in storage because I don't have a place for them. So yeah, I am a librarian. I thought today I would kind of go through a little tour of how I keep all of my books and where I store them, what my thinking is behind when I display them, because I love books. And then maybe I have my kids' books get disorganized pretty quickly and I'm always having to redo them just because the kids are pulling from them all the time. So I might want to reorganize at least one of the bookshelves and then I kind of can show you real time my thoughts on that. I wore my most librarian shirt these are not fake glasses. These are my actual reading glasses. I bought these on Amazon so that I would wear I could wear them around my neck. So these these are not a prop yo because I'm also not a fake librarian. I'm a real librarian. So these are my real librarian glasses. This is my front room. We are in a rental. So there was only so much I could do. I did paint and I wanted it to look like a library, <laughs> an old time library in like an English home. And so I went with a color that was inspired by Robert Kime, he's an English designer, a very famous English designer with beautiful stuff in his house. This is what we ended up with. It's the top of a hutch that I painted and put some legs on. I think it was free. Oh, and then I had Mike cut some wood and I stained it and put it on the top because you know, a lot of times these hutches, there's nothing here and I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to use it as another surface. And so I painted it and loaded it up with books. If you've been around here before, you know that I do love organizing my books by color. And that's probably the first way that I do it. In general, I organize my books by age group. So these are the books for the mature audience. No, for like, you know, more classics and adult books. Um, and the kids books I keep somewhere else. I don't have them mixed in this house. So I do love mixing my color. And the way that I do that is I take all of the books and I stack them either on their side or I stack them spined up along the four and then I organize them to kind of figure out how they look together and then I'll start stacking. Now, sometimes, and they, maybe this is obvious, but you can just put your books straight across but it can get boring. It can also be hard. That way, if they're straight across, you might pull one book out and then they all start leaning. And so it's nice to break up the monotony by putting some books on their side. It's also good for books to not always be on their spine, but sometimes be laying on their side. And so, you know, you put some across like this, they look so pretty, and then stack these. It also helps too, because these books are beautiful and they're all about the same height and they just look really great. But then I have some of my paperbacks, more modern paperbacks, and they're not quite as beautiful and they're lots of different heights and thicknesses. And so by putting them on their side, it kind of breaks it up and you don't think about how they look next to each other so much, even while they're in the same color family. Another thing that I don't mind doing is stacking books on the floor. I don't have as many here right now because I've freed up some space in other places, but I am not afraid to stack books on the floor. You do have to pull them out and you know dust or vacuum or sweep around them every once in a while, especially if you own really hairy cats like we do. <laughs> okay, next is, sometimes I don't organize them by color. This is a, a collection of books called the Harvard Classics. So this is an early set of them that I got at the thrift store. I just have this, I don't even, I got this obviously at the thrift store for a few dollars. It still has some previous owners 
allied moving tag on it, which I just thought was cute. So I left it on there. So I have those stored, you know, like in the same way where I'm going back and forth between stacked and um, vertical on their spine. Another thing that I like to do because I love books is display them like this. This is such a beautiful book. Beautiful. And just look at that. But if you put it inside, you don't see that quite as much and which is sad. And so I pick these up at the thrift store when I see them for like a dollar usually each so that I can have throughout my house beautiful books there. Throughout the year, I can change up what books I'm displaying like that. So they can be, you know, at Christmas time, I can have a red book there or a green book. Or in the fall, I can do maybe a book that's more Halloween colors or fall colors. So I like that. And it, it just, in general, I like to change up my decor and using books is a great way to do that. Another thing that I found recently were these plate, um, what are these called, guys, uh, that you hang on your wall? Sconces. I think they're supposed to hold a plate, but I thought, wouldn't it be even cooler to take some of my favorite books and put those on the sconces? So I have two. Unfortunately, as I was putting this one up, I broke it, but I still put it up and it took this beautiful copy of Leaves of Grass and put it in there. And I love this vintage children's book. And I just think it looks so pretty. Another thing is, I always keep my eye out for good bookends because that way I can have a collection of books set as part of the decor of the room and just use them as a backdrop throughout the house. Another thing I do to do keep books around the house is use them as little platforms in my decor. And I guess probably a lot of people do this, but I try these days not to have any books that I actually don't love. And so you can find pretty books, but you can also find pretty books that you love and that you will read or will look through. It's also just fun, like I said, because right now I have white ones, but then I get tired of that and I can switch them out for other colors or bring, maybe I find a new pillow to go on this sofa, but I wanna bring that color in over here or whatever. And so I can switch out these books and do so. And yes, I know this is a little bit shoved in here, but this room is kind of small and awkward and I needed more <laughs> books and light storage. So another way that I keep my books is on footstools. Um, sometimes you'll see footstools at thrift stores and you'll think, why would I want a footstool that doesn't match a chair? And I think that's kind of a Victorian thing or an old fashioned thing that we had, we loved footstools back in the day. And now we kind of have usually matching footstools or chaises or lounges or whatever. But um, I got this one, I think it's pretty old and I recovered it and I just keep it under here with a stack of books on it. And I usually like on these books, on these footstools, on this size thing, I like tend to keep my picture books because I want my picture books to be somewhere I can grab quickly if I just wanna lay on the couch or sit in a chair and look at one really quickly. Or if I have a guest who wants to do the same. Here I have the same thing going on. Just a little vintage Tudor house teapot and a vintage Swan planter. But this table is different because it has this little section and I just stuffed it with some of my favorite beautiful books. And that way I can just slide one out and look at it. And I think it's cute. I think it makes a room cozy to have stacks of books in it. Okay, another thing I do is I have this old bench, really old bench that I found and I put on top of it a fruit box, an antique fruit box that I inherited from my parents. And I filled it with the books that I, I just love home decor books. And so I wanted them to be something I could grab easily and just be able to look at. It's cute and it's an easy way to access the book and see it. You can find baskets and boxes all the time at thrift stores and antique malls. So. A lot of these ideas I'm sharing today might be pretty self-evident. I think probably if you're a lover of books, you're doing a lot of these things, but I also think it's nice to see 
other people doing the same thing sometimes. I believe that putting glass in front of books makes them way more beautiful. I don't know what it is. I think it's kind of like it creates this little secret like place that you want to explore, like what's in there. And so even though the glass is missing from this antique desk, <laughs> secretary desk, I still think it creates that feeling. So let me show you. I kind of put all of my gardening books in here because in the spring, because I wanted this to be a little springy vignette. And so I have these books on different plants. I've got a lot of gardening books right inside here. Love these ones. I often display these um, forward facing because they're so pretty and I love them so much. Um, did I mention that I get almost all of my books from the thrift store? And then, but I did throw these in here. They're just a really pretty set of some classics. And then all of these field guide books I love put those in there too. Another thing that I like to do is when I have a beautiful book, even if I don't have one of those stands, I still will just open it up and face it forward because some books are so beautiful, they're meant to be seen and it would be sad to turn it on its side. Do you like how I'm using some sticky tack to keep this closed? I do, because it works. That's a sweet little cabinet, I love this one. An old English secretary desk, with lots of treasures. So here's my entryway. Here's the last piece I just showed you. And here's my stairs. And I have this antique table at the bottom of the stairs and I have two book vignettes on it. You'll have to excuse the noise. Uh, it's a pretty noise though. My daughter Pearl is practicing her flute. So here I have some more art books stacked. And like I said, I like to have little seasonal vignettes. So I got out uh, this pretty tea set that I thrifted. One of the kids did break one of the teacups, but beautiful. I don't know much about it, but it, that is beautiful. And a little milk glass hand, and then a an original painting. I think it's watercolor, very sweet. And I keep it on this little Victorian stand. And this is probably gonna be changing the next month or so to be more fall themed. I have a bunch of vintage Nancy Drew books, as well as a Charles Dickens book, some antique glasses that I thrifted. I don't know if anybody but me even notices that there's antique glasses sitting on top of these books, but it makes me happy. Over here, I have an antique butler's desk. This actually folds out and turns into a desk. I'm not gonna do it right now because I only have one hand. This is a single book, but there was this beautiful, huge dictionary in such a great sagey green with some cat hair on it. So many cats. Um, and then this great blue, and I knew I wanted it. It might look silly on a bookshelf because it would just take everything over, but it is a great platform for displaying different things. So, you know, if you see a big, beautiful book, don't worry, you can store it. It can be all by itself, just being pretty. This is my mantle. And it's also always changing because I like change. Though always that stays the same is that I have books up here. Sometimes I've had more books, so I have a more full spectrum. But last Christmas, I took out all of the books except for these colors. I took out all the pinks and the purples and then they just never made it back in. And I did thrift these amazing uh, geode bookends. And I love the way that it looks. It's fun, it gives you that hit of rainbow. I love rainbow. I don't know about you guys, but it also looks kind of studious and cozy. On the wall opposite the fireplace I is where I have my children's library. It's just kind of a pass through behind the sofa and into the kitchen, but it works. And I like having books displayed, even if they're messy kids books. I just think once again, that it just creates a really cozy feeling. It makes the house feel interesting, like somewhere where you could spend some time and it's not cold, it's warm. But anyways, I think one of the hardest parts of children's books is so many of them are so thin and they barely have titles on the side. So it's hard to find if you store them the typical way that you would store books. And so that's where I have some tips for you. First off, try to find a forward facing bookshelf. I see them at thrift stores all the time. This one I found on Marketplace. It was just an ugly brown and kind of junked out and I cleaned it up and I painted, I got like paint samples, a bunch of different colors 
and I did it in rainbow because I love rainbows. Not making a political statement. One of the things I also like, because it is a rainbow, I can kind of store books by color. And so you can see, I just try to match the covers of the book to the colors of the shelves. This will be changing when the seasons change. I store my like Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas books and boxes and then I get them out and we load up the shelves with those and they won't be co color coordinated at that time but it'll be fun and it'll be another way to decorate my house for the seasons by having seasonal books on display. Another thing that I do is I have these baskets which have been destroyed by the cats. They like scratch at the front of them but I don't care. I thrifted them and they're the perfect size to put down here at the bottom of the shelf and put books that I mean, from the side, it's like super boring. I don't know what that is, but from the front, there's a book that I would like to read. So I just set them in here. They get messy and every once in a while, I kind of have to go through them and kind of rearrange them. Speaking of which, I think I might need to tackle this shelf today and make it a little bit more interesting. These shelves I got thrifted as well. They're from Pottery Barn. When I'm looking for bookshelves, these are okay. I don't know if they were meant to be bookshelves or more like toy storage shelves because they're really deep. You can see like, and that kind of makes it harder for books to look neat and clean when the shelves are really deep because what do you, you know, there's all of this space in between, but we're going to make it work as promised. Now that I've given you a tour of all the books, I promised I would redo this and I remembered why I haven't redone it yet. It's because it's like, oh, it's messy, but up here, I'm going to probably redo this. Long time ago when I started collecting books, I would just collect pretty books. And I, I totally don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just, I want, I didn't want, I wanted my home not only to celebrate the beauty. And Eve goes up and down the stairs really quietly. <laughs> I wanted it to celebrate not only the beauty of books, but also um, just the knowledge that's contained in them. And so I phased out books that are just pretty, but not meaningful, um, at least to us. And so yes, we've we've opened all of the books and and somebody's read at least a page of them. And I love to just go through books. So there are no meaningless books in our house unless they're supposed to be. I am getting closer and it looks better than it did, that's for sure. Okay, cleaned up the floor, the shelves are done. And it's 5.08 and I'm just gonna make some dinner. And guess what? I turn around and I make a HelloFresh. You guys, if you've been around here before, you know that even families of 11 can love HelloFresh. HelloFresh has been amazing for us. It has made meal prep like a dream. In fact, the other night was date night and we let the kids make a meal while we were gone. And Andrew said it was like the best meal. What did you say about HelloFresh? When we made it, when mom and dad are gone, I was thinking that the food was so good, I would go to a restaurant just to eat it and pay like restaurant prices. It was like really good food. We really do love HelloFresh. And I made it and I'm really bad at cooking. I can make eggs and that's kind of the end of my skills. They cheer when they hear that we're eating HelloFresh. And Let we me are step tonight. in the shot too real quick. I want to be in the part of this. <laughs> What do you I have think, to say? I think we need to tell them what it is in case they don't know. Okay. So I'm going to explain this real quick. HelloFresh, woo, give me this. HelloFresh is a meal delivery service. The food comes delivered to your door in a box. That's and it's, it's pretty cool. It's like an insulated box. It has uh, little ice packs in it to keep everything cool. So you open up the box, you get the meals out. They come in these cool bags. All you got to do is take the, the bags out, put them in the refrigerator. And then when you're ready to go, you make them. Pull out the recipe card. Shows you the meal, all the ingredients. They're there. Really simple instructions on the back. Otherwise, yeah, HelloFresh is great. Makes it so you have the ingredients you need. It's it's pretty quick to make. They taste really good. Saves you money, saves you time going to the grocery store. All that good stuff. This is what we're making tonight. 
We're making taquera pork balls with corn esquites or esquites, sour cream and cilantro. Sounds good. And esquites is a Mexican street food with corn, mayo, chili powder, cheese, and lime. Ooh. Oh my. Yum, yum. Okay, let's make it. If you want to give HelloFresh a try for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com and use code NORP16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. The meal is done. Everyone's waiting here to eat it. It all looks pretty dang good. Corn, pork, cheese, cilantro, jalapeno, lime, sour cream. It's all here. Mm. The nice lucky winners, Andrew. Oh, Andrew, you got a pre-made bowl, you lucky. How is it, Andrew? It's really good. Do you actually. approve? Yeah, I like the sweet of the corn with the savory of the meat, and the rice is good. Oh yeah. Yeah, you've had this chance to taste it, Megan. Do you like it? Okay, the meal was a success as usual. So if you want to give HelloFresh a try for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com. Use code NORP16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. All right, with that, the day is done. The books. My library, my personal library, has been sorted just a little bit more. If you have any other questions about books or if you have any tips of how you store your books, uh, let me know in the comments. And if there's anything else you'd like me to give you a more in-depth tour like I did with books today, let me know. But thanks for coming along, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and head over to norpensouth.com. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.